Do you remember how exciting it used to be when the Olympics were coming? You knew you were going to spend a couple of weeks just watching the Olympics, this great patriotic event. It was just so much fun. I don't know, maybe this is all just childlike fantasies we're engaged with here. But guess what? In case you haven't heard, the Winter Olympics are back, back in Beijing, China. And that is the topic of today's discussion. Hello, I am Jim Hale, and I am joined today by LifeSite Vice President Gualberto Garcia Jones. How you doing, Gualberto? Good to be here with you. And Nick Marmalejo, one of our new writers. Nick Marmalejo, it's so good to to have you with LifeSite. It's great to be here. Thank you so much, Jim. Yes. So we need to talk about China. We need to talk about the Olympics, men, because we are about to get an avalanche. Uh, it, it's, it's just going to be <laughs> communist propaganda, and you're going to see all the useful idiots in the international media with uh, the American media leading the way, NBC, going to be telling us about you know, how noble China is and what a, uh, a great response to COVID they had and mm -hmm. just, you know, what a modern nation this is and, and all that with this spirit of Olympic, Olympic unity and solidarity and all this. But, but the truth is, the reason why we are having this discussion today is to shine some light on the true nature of the Chinese communist regime, which is the biggest abuser of human rights in the world. Would, would, would that be accurate, Gualberto? I think that's absolutely correct. And uh, China as a nation is a great nation. They have a, an, an amazing history. Um, unfortunately, they um, are under the yoke of the Communist Party. And so uh, for the West to just simply uh, play the part of the propaganda arm of the Communist Party is just really sickening. And, uh, and I'm so glad that at LifeSite, we've decided to um, have a real, shine a real spotlight on the abuses from the Communist Party uh, that they're perpetrating on their own people, first and foremost, but then on the whole world. Because as we all know, China is having a massive global impact. And uh, you know, how could anybody uh, ignore the fact that, that it was their lab in Wuhan that released this pandemic that's changed the entire world? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's interesting, too, in that uh, you, you talk about they're actually waging war on their own people. Every totalitarian regime, first and foremost, is afraid of their own people. So yeah. they have to start with propagandizing their own people and censoring their own people. Yeah. And I think I think that's the really scary part to me. Obviously, I have a sense of uh, solidarity with the innocent people in, in China. Certainly, we we know what's happening to the Catholics in China, to the Uyghurs. Um, to, uh, to the Falun Gong members that, that has been going on forever. Um, but really what we see now is this dangerous seeping of the Chinese communist way of censoring and control, and it's coming to the West as well. It's coming to the United States, to Canada, to Europe, where these same uh, techniques of totalitarianism, really, and information control um, are being adopted here. And that's really, really scary. Mm -hmm. Well, Nick, let's talk about the crimes of the Chinese Communist Party, because it is a long list. Yeah, I mean, they could they could easily be um, at, the, at the top of the list for the number of bad things that they've done. Uh, hundreds of millions, uh, estimated hundreds of millions, untold number of abortions through the China One Child policy. Um, you've got the, the Uyghur genocide that's been going on for decades now. And uh, that the Uyghur population, for those who don't know, they're the um, like a, a soft, if you will, branded version of Muslims in the uh, northwestern region of the country. And um, they want their own culture. They, they want their own level of independence within China. But um, that, of course, is not good with the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. And so they, the Uyghurs who number about mm, 10 to 11 million in population are just relentlessly persecuted. They've got uh, detainment camps there and uh, we've, stories have been leaking out for years on um, you know, the re-education camps if you're a political adversary or viewed as a threat by the CCP. Um, unfortunately, there's tons of human rights abuses that go on in those camps. Everything from rape, torture, people just getting disappeared um, so it, it's, it's a terrible place to go. So that's a huge thing that's ongoing now. And I know the, um, one of the themes of the Olympics is solidarity with their people, but they're definitely not in solidarity with 
the Uyghur Muslims, the Fulong Gong, any religious minority, including you know Catholics who, who want to be loyal to the true church and not the state church. So that that is just you know a brief introduction. After I mean, the um, when you when you look at that in the larger when you step back and then you look at the 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 virus being unleashed on the world. Um, I mean, it definitely appears that the Chinese are at war with the best in Western values and the best in uh, humanity, and not just on their own people. Mm. Well. <clears throat> Well, Berto, let's let's talk about a couple of other of, of the biggies. Uh, forced abortion, which has mm -hmm. always been part of the the, the communist uh, regime, and organ harvesting. Mm -hmm. It's <clears throat> one of the most gruesome practices in, in the modern world, but it still takes place. And I think a lot of those people that uh, Nick was talking about who are in these detention camps, that's where they get a lot of these organs. Right, and and uh, and from their political. Uh, prisoners, you know, they they have many many political prisoners. Um, unfortunately, it seems you know we've we began to take a, a page out of their book with what happened on on January sixth and all the people that are languishing in our prisons. But imagine if those people that are there are not only being detained without charges, but they're having their organs harvested. That's what happens in China. Um, and and in terms of the forced abortion, there is a just a, an incredibly horrific tragic documentary called One Child Nation. It was nominated yep. for an Oscar, yep. mm. I think in 2019. Must, must, absolutely must watch it's, that. It's yeah. streaming yeah. On, on Amazon Prime. Um, so you can, you, I, I don't know for how long. I right, mean, right. You know. right, maybe they shut that off during the Olympics. That's, a, that's the type of stuff that, that China is doing, the type of control they have. Um, but I would recommend all of our viewers go and watch that because it, it's incredible. It's from, I'd say it's from a, even a pro-abortion point of view. So it's a, it's an American Chinese lady who goes back to visit her her family there, and uh, and she's not opposed to abortion. She's you know opposed to the to the coercive nature of it, but just the 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 way that they do it, the absolute brutality with which they exercise their power is is really re remarkable, just incredible. And and to think you know that that we we've, we've had this whole debate about you know, about uh, voting rights. The left right now wants to push, they want to eliminate the filibuster in order to get, <laughs> right. you know, to guarantee voting rights, which we all know, you know, is really a code for, for dismantling voter integrity laws. But in China, people don't get to vote, right? Like, where where's the outrage from, from the corporate media about that? Are they going to say a peep about that? I bet they're not. And no. that's just, that's just incredible. Well, <laughs> right. In China, there are no human rights. There are no there are no civil rights. It's like you know, how many McDonald's do you have to open in Shanghai before uh, you stop torturing your people, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Nick, let's talk about how sophisticated the Chinese propaganda arm is, because I I think most Westerners don't understand how they are being manipulated. Yeah, I mean the. the it, they have their hands very deeply in every large organization. Um, they've penetrated, um, you know, the corporate media, big tech. We know that they have, uh, you know, people there. Uh, they have ownership um, in all the emerging platforms on social media, whether that's um, things like Grinder, now Getter, the the, the supposedly free speech. Um, platform has some links to China. So you start looking more deeply into, and that's to say nothing of like Facebook, Google, and, and some of these larger um, big tech companies who have relationships um, with, the, with the media and, the, and larger corporations that the Chinese are able to leverage. And let's talk and, about how that, how that works. So somebody goes onto Twitter, and says something critical of China, and then all of a sudden they're inundated with uh, all these pro-China comments below and that kind of thing. That's yeah. right. They have um, they actually have centers in China that where they pay, you know, basically pro-CCP propagandists to to look for you know find these sorts of uh, comments or whatever might be trending that might be against China, and then all of a sudden put out all these pro-Chinese statements. So it gives the impression, the illusion that, you know, everything's great in China. They're gonna create right. a new narrative that China is, you know, 
fostering peace and harmony. It's this booming place. We all got to go there. Da da da. There, all these human rights abuses. They don't really happen. Let's let's not look at that. Let's not examine that. Let's you know pro China. China is great. And this goes to your point about human dignity. There is no human dignity in China. The only dignity that matters is the CCP, and that's all they yeah. care about. It's all CCP all the time. And uh, if you get in the way, you get eliminated. Yep. And that's and that's what they're doing in social media. And you know between that and the prison camps and, well, and, and so forth. And Gualberto, uh, we, we can't have this discussion without talking about the fact that the Chinese Communist Party basically runs the Catholic Church in China. It's, it's incredible, um, yeah. you know, to, to think that they get, uh, they get to pick the bishops. But the, really the most incredible thing is, you know, and, and Nick was talking about the infiltration that they've, they've done with institutions. Um, they must have infiltrated the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church agreed to this, right? Pope Francis, it's one of the first things. I, I think I was, I was very hesitant to, you know, to really to doubt the Pope as a, you know, as a faithful Catholic yep. for a while. And I think that was the straw that broke the right. camel's back with me. When, when we saw that the Vatican under Pope Francis was willing to throw faithful Catholics under the bus in China and to allow the Communist Party, a, a party that believes that God doesn't exist, um, to actually pick the bishops, um, it's incredible. But, you know, we, it, it gets even more scandalous than that because we know who uh, Pope Francis sent to China to negotiate yeah. all of this, right? <laughs> None that, other. That paragon of morality, <laughs> Cardinal McCarran. Yes. Um, right? The child abusing uh, a cardinal. And so uh, it's, it's really incredible. Um, I, you know, I am positive that the NBC and company, they're not going to mention any of these abuses. And, uh, and so instead of uh, covering any of the amazing feats of, of the athletes, and I love sports, you know, I wish I could, I could watch the Winter Olympics, I could watch a figure skating with my daughter, and oh. you know, the bobsledding, yeah. which we never get to watch other than, you <laughs> Well, know, that's two right. Minutes. And you know, I gotta tell you, my wife's niece is married to the United States bobsledding coach. Okay. Well, Mike Kahn, yeah, and, and Mike's, you know, a, Mike's a friend of mine. How, I was just texting how him. How terrible and, is yeah, that, right? I, it's like, Right. They, I, they have to go to China right. where they have current outbreaks of these diseases where they're, they're going to have to probably take burner phones. They do. Um, I mean, that's what uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said. The first thing that they do is put their phones to the side. They all get burner, burner phones whenever they made the trip to China and they get on, they get there and yeah. They go. And yeah. so the, these, you know, these athletes work their tails off, especially in sports like that, that don't have a, a huge following for four years, for their whole lives, really. And now they have to go to a communist country where they don't even have the freedom to, to, to speak. And uh, so many of them will be tailed. Many of them will be, you know, uh, spied upon while they're there for doing nothing other than pursuing their sport. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm so glad that LifeSite is going to be publishing at least a story a day during the Olympics. So this is going to be our coverage of the Olympics, our coverage in solidarity with the people of China, with the people of the world that are suffering under communism. We're going to be exposing every angle possible during this these two weeks from the 4th to the 20th. And um, and I know you're going to be doing some some great interviews. We're looking to interview some people on the Hill yep. about this. So um, stay tuned to that. I think, you know, people need to need to wake up because it's it's a real it's a real problem. Um, and the depth of the penetration that they've had into into our uh, corporate media into our government into our also government. Yeah. Is, is incredible into our yeah. church. Yeah, you know, you, you mentioned January 6th and the, the injustice of these people who literally walked into the Capitol. You know, I know I was there. S many of them did get out of hand. I, I witnessed it. I got it on tape. But most of these people who are languishing in, in prison right now, mm -hmm. um, not getting due process, they walked into the Capitol. Right. You know, that taxpayer supported <laughs> building. Right. right? Um, but you know what, Nick, that morning I went out and I shot my story for LifeSite. I was covering January 6th that day, as was Gualberto. And the story that I focused on, I didn't know what I was going to cover that day. But the night before, I had seen this convoy of, of, of uh, Chinese hundreds mm -hmm. of cars and they were having a gathering and they were there to protest the nomination of Joe Biden. The next day, by far, the largest minority group were Chinese. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many of these were Taiwanese, but I can, I can wow. tell you many of them couldn't speak English. These were Chinese nationalists, 
um, you know, Chinese students from America who had come here to to protest Joe Biden because they knew all about Joe Biden and 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 you know what he did with Obama and Hunter Biden right. and that whole you know dirty history uh, that that Biden had you know by uh, accommodating the Chinese yeah. and doing their bidding by the way and. It was really one of the most powerful assignments I've ever had because they came up to me wow. like they were wanting me to interview them wow. and speaking in, 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 in their, you know, the best way they could to express, you know, how we had to stop communism in this country because they seen, they had seen by the way that our government was responding to COVID, they saw communism, Nick. Yeah. Yeah, and it takes a ton of courage for the Chinese specifically to to speak out. Um, here locally, we have a uh, a contingent of Chinese at a, at a, at a Chinese school, and um, I know firsthand that uh, you know whenever there's uh, the, the the subject of China comes up and there's criticism of. The, the government of the CCP. I mean, they're they're afraid in an American school, thousands of miles away. Yeah, they're they're afraid that somehow whatever they say in that American classroom is going to leak back to China. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they and went on the record them with them and yeah. their family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. They went on the record with me that morning. I thought of that. Like, yeah, like they could get in trouble for this. Absolutely, right? well, definitely, right. especially their families. This is one way that the CCP you know, <clears> they, they have hundreds of thousands of students, probably millions of students in the U.S. Yeah. Um, and the way that they make sure that they don't stay here um, and the way that they make sure that they stay, you know, I guess, uh, loyal to the CCP is by exerting pressure on their families. That's exactly uh, uh, just what Cuba, you know, I was uh, I was the director of a group uh, 20 years ago called Americans for a Free Cuba. And I got to know former Cuban political prisoners and their families. That's the exact same way that they operate. Yep. And, and that's what they're doing as well in, um, in the uh, Xiangjing province, I think is what it is, in the northwest of China with the, with the Uyghur Muslims, is they will allow one family member to go over to Kazakhstan or to another country. But meanwhile, they take the other family member's passport, confiscate it, and keep them stuck so that that person is forced to come back. They have some leverage yeah. and control over right. the individual. And, and guess what? If you step out of line, your, your dad loses his job, mm -hmm. uh, your siblings can't go to school, and, mm -hmm. and that's how it works. Well, Berto, I want to ask you something. Um, I, I heard you briefly have a conversation with uh, my colleague Alejandro Rodriguez uh, during the March for Life, and I just heard a little bit about it, but it was so um, moving for me to hear you tell your story about why you love freedom so much, uh, because you're an, you're an immigrant to this country. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, for me, it, it's uh, it's America is the land of opportunity, and. Um, you know, when, when my family came, we were the kind of typical immigrant story, right? Where we had a couple hundred bucks in our, in our possession and, and uh, you know, my parents were able to, to go to school, uh, get an education, you know, we, we grew up watching every penny. We, we did farming uh, and sold, uh, sold produce at a farmer's market to, to make it to the end of the month. And, uh, and you know, never, never did I get anything but, you know, help from, from local people, the desire for, for us to succeed and to do better. And, uh, and you know, just the, the sheer, uh, the, the spirit of opportunity that's, that's in this country. And unfortunately, I think that's under attack. And so, you know, the, the uh, kind of the polar opposites that we see in the world traditionally was, you know, the United States and, and the Soviet Union. I think that polarity has kind of shifted mm -hmm. a little bit now and it's the United States, part of the United States, and China. And so to me, you know, the greatness of this country, the opportunities, the, the freedom, the openness, you know, I, I wasn't always a, a faithful person. I, I had my, uh, you know, my rebellious youth and, um, but the ability to actually experience these things with freedom, with freedom of conscience, freedom of religion, allowed me to learn from, from my mistakes and, and then choose a, a better path. And unfortunately, that's the type of thing that I see diminishing mm. with the cancellations, with the censorship, um, and, and just with the rampant Marxism that we see mm. all around us. So, um, you know, I want to fight um, this. I think I think the U.S. is uh, the last beacon of hope for 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 this way of life. I think most of the world agrees. 
of course, there are great people everywhere. There are you know, strong um, movements in, in Canada, in Europe, in Australia, all over the world, in China even, you know, with, with all the danger that that, that entails. Um, but the U.S. really has always been that force for, for good. With all our faults, with all our you know, moral blemishes, um, we have been that force for good, and good has been allowed to flourish here. And so, you know, I'm going to continue to fight for that. Mm. That's, that's what I love doing. Mm. That's what I think LifeSite stands for as well. Mm. Um, and part of that is solidarity with the people who are yep. suffering in China, not covering it up because we want a better, you know, sneaker deal or whatever it was that LeBron, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. gave into or Google and Facebook, you know, complying with censorship. No, we're not going to do that. Um, we're going we're gonna to cover, you know, with, with all, the, all the truth that we can uh, muster, all the abuses that are happening in China. So I'm just, you know, so happy to, to be doing it and uh, uh, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I, I love hearing your story, Gualberto. Um, Nick, I gotta be honest with you. The reason why I don't wanna watch the Olympics is that because it sickens me. The same reason why I, I, I don't watch the NFL. I didn't watch the playoff games yesterday and I spent most of my professional career as a television sportscaster. I've covered Super Bowls and all the playoffs, all the big events. I grew up, sports was my life. Wow. I cannot watch anymore when they kneel for the national anthem. Yeah. And to think that we're going to be seeing our athletes taking a knee. I mean, just growing up, that was one of the proudest moments when, when you know, I grew up in the 60s and 70s. And, and you had the Cold War. So you had the Russians over here and the, the East German women swimmers with hair under their arms, you know, because <laughs> they were all taking steroids, right? And it was just like this real epic confrontation that you had. And the, the, uh, we always did so great in the Olympics. And when you saw our athletes standing there with their hands over their hearts, singing the national anthem proudly, and then to think what in the world has become uh, of, of our culture that it's okay to take a knee on an international stage and disgrace your country. It's, it's awful. I, I, I feel similarly, I have the same level of, of juice for hockey uh, that you have for like all sports. Yeah. And growing up as a Chicago Blackhawks fan, my favorite experience in the world was going to a game with my family and being there for the national anthem because the crowds just Sing went it. nuts. Yeah, yeah, they went yeah, nuts. Right. And in fact, I, right. I, 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 I did a little bit of a deep dive and the old United, the old Chicago stadium was 10 times louder than any other yeah. stadium in the hockey league. And so it was just that crazy. And even listening to it on the radio uh, as a kid because they didn't broadcast the home games, it's another story. But the idea is that you would hear these people just going nuts and slamming the wall, you know, as, as soon as the uh, Star Spangled Banner gets to that peak. And so f to see where we are now, it's a totally different world. Yeah, well, it is. I'll, I'll tell you something though, just so that we, we don't, we're not too pessimistic. Sure. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we still have certain sports where you know the, the anthem is still played before every meet i'm i'm really I, i've never been a swimmer but one of my kids is a, <laughs> is a really good swimmer and before every swim meet they have the national anthem and it's it's a good 95 percent of the people that you know put their hand over their heart and uh and uh, salute the flag that's and, good and that's such a good thing because it's you know it's not about brainless nationalism that you know no. that that it in some way looks down upon other nations it's about being proud of of who, who you are as a country. And our country you know, has many different people, many different religions, races, all that. But at some point, if you're gonna be a nation, you have to come together. And the national anthem, to me, that, that's what it represents. Well, Absolutely. And, and you know, it's never any problem for athletes from the other countries to show national pride. <laughs> that's right. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. They should. O only they us, should. right? Yeah. Yes, we, we, don't, we don't wanna cheer for America too much. Okay, so we're going to have Nick, I know you're going to be writing some articles for us here yes, in the sir. next couple of weeks because we're going to be dropping some truth on the communist. That's right. <laughs> right. I'm sure they'll appreciate it very much. Yeah, you know yeah. what? They'll probably be reading this stuff, Goldberg. <laughs> probably, and, and you know, if our website goes down uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, now, you know why. Yeah, you, know? you probably know why. <laughs> that yeah. means we're doing a very good job. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, the censors have been after us before, but we always find a way to bounce back. Don't Absolutely. We? We've got a great team all around, from our IT guys to you and the video guys, our reporters, I'm just so proud of everyone. And, and uh, you know, we're going to keep doing this. And, and the fewer people that, that do it in the mainstream media, 
the more people that are going to come to to watch uh, our coverage. And yep. so, um, you know, if if you want to uh, know what the CCP has been doing in, you know, we have we have 16 days dur- during the Olympics. I wish we had 100 because they've done so much. Uh, we could take a year. Yeah, I mean, right. still we, yeah. just, we could do this yeah. every day. Yeah. So we're going to highlight this um, and uh, and really show the world the harms of the CCP. Yeah. And and maybe it makes a little bit of a difference in, in the lives of the good people in China yeah. who want freedom like everybody else. Well, that, that, and they need someone to speak for them. That, you know, who, that, that is the truth because, uh, you know, it's like Whitaker Chambers said, you know, every soul is continually striving for a, 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 the condition of freedom. And without freedom, the soul dies. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what happens to a people. You're, you're seeing it in America. You're seeing it in Canada, you know, with all the, the, the tyrannical COVID restrictions. They're trying to crush the soul. They're trying to crush the spirit of people. It's amazing to see the level of nationalism that has risen up during this whole trucker um, oh, protest. It's been fabulous, and it's been heartening as an American to see. Yes. Because it right. took it takes right. a ton of sacrifice yeah. to drive wherever in the freezing cold, show up in Ottawa, make demands, and say, we're here. Yeah, I, and I, I was glued this weekend to John Henry Weston's coverage of the trucker protest in Canada. They were out there in the sub-zero temperatures Amazing. chronicling these people, these men. It was almost like you were watching uh, oppressed Chinese people, Gualberto, yeah. just 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 speaking up finally see, because they're nice, polite Canadians, but they've had enough. If we know? don't push back now, we will be oppressed yes. Chinese, like the oppressed Well, Chinese. you know what? I'm glad that you're hiring tough guys <laughs> like Nick Marmaleo. He was just telling us a story a little earlier about uh, facing down a Chinese uh, general who actually <laughs> happened to stop off at a coffee shop here in Front Royal. <clears throat> it was the most bizarre thing. Um, it was very <laughs> surreal, right? Because it was the last thing you would expect on a Saturday morning. I think I was heading to Lowe's for some oddball project that I had going on. And I was like, you know what? I'll grab some coffee. And so I, I zoom right in there. And there's this like perfect spot. I get it. I look and I see a bunch of Chinese soldiers in uniform. I'm like, huh, this is weird. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> so I was like, okay, whatever. I'm going to get out. You know, maybe, you know, we're 70 miles from DC. It's not unusual to have, you know, people coming back and forth. So I get out of my, of my Jeep and, um, I'm looking very much like a weekend mountain person, you know, with the flannel. Because you are. That there is yes, that, right. yeah. yes. <laughs> this is just a disguise. So <laughs> I step out and I turn on the sidewalk to go towards the door. And there is this really short Chinese general. I, he was, I think he was a general. I mean, he had the bar. I mean, you know, I've seen military before. Yeah. He, he was definitely decorated. You know, he was important. He was the man, the honcho there on site. And... He gave me the most cold um, glare stare. He's like, he stared me down. And uh, the thing that quickly went through my mind, as I was telling you guys earlier, is that he had just got out of a briefing about the type of people in America <laughs> right. who would resist him. And I was the cardboard cutout, <laughs> right. you know, in that, in that presentation. And there I am here at Starbucks. And he just gave me that cold glare. And I just knew instantly like if we were in his country, I would, you know, uh, disappear. I would be disappeared. And, you know. But little did he know you were packing at the time. Uh, yeah, I was actually. <laughs> so it could have been an international incident. Right, uh, right. But you know, with censorship being what it is, we probably, you've never heard about it. I wouldn't have been able to tell my story. I would have, you know, probably. Uh, no, yeah. you, you, would have been the, you would have been the bad guy in that. But I'm um, great. You know, we also have a Kennedy Hall, who's like a, a, <clears throat> a, a martial arts uh, power lifter guy. We got this guy, uh, Nate Stringer. He's a big old boy. So we're, we're really starting to get some bouncers <laughs> on the staff now, Gualberto. That's right. I love That's it. That's right. It's a return of uh, masculinity. <laughs> yes, I do. I'm going to interview Kennedy on Thursday about his new book on masculinity. I, I can't wait to do that. But gentlemen, thank you both uh, for, for coming by. This is a serious uh, topic we're discussing here today. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I might have to watch some of the bobsledding because it's family for mm-hmm. us. Mike Kahn is a great guy, good Catholic guy, I got to tell you. Um, loves his country. You know, uh, Army Army reservist, uh, one of the best men I've ever known. So go American bobsled team. All right. Um, but uh, but we do need to to pay attention, and we need to be speaking out about the true nature of the communist regime. 
Absolutely. And that is causing more pain and suffering in this world right now right than, than anybody else. So That's absolutely true. Thank you, men. Uh, please uh, be, be watching uh, LifeSiteNews.com and, uh, and come right back here for some videos. We're trying to get an interview with the great human rights member of Congress, Chris Smith from New Jersey. And I, I know you will be, uh, when, when Chris Smith speaks about human rights, um, you, you've heard something amazing. So we'll have that for you. So God bless you. And you know what? Since it's Olympic time, God bless America. Amen. Oh, Amen. Canada too, I guess. But you know, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> bye bye guys.